what are some red flags that people can kind of look out for to help them critically analyze some of the content that that comes to their feed? I would say I think people have to develop a sort of, you know, excuse my language, bullshit radar, right? We need to have some form of filtering system by which people can understand what's likely to be quackery, what's likely to be valid, right? Now, some ways in which we can do that include things like, um, you know, do they make absolutist claims, absolutist statements? What I mean by this is, are they saying things like, um, these are the most inflammatory foods for your body, right? These are the worst three foods for your health. These are the worst foods for your gut. These are the best three foods to eat, right? This ab absolutist claims and statements they really highlight someone's ignorance into how nutrition actually works because there are no universally uh, most inflammatory foods for a single person, right? For example, an apple for me probably won't have any effect on my systemic inflammation. It might not even lower it, it might not increase it. But an apple for someone that's got inflammatory bowel disease, that could exacerbate their you know, IBD, right? That could definitely cause inflammation for them. You know, gluten for me is not doesn't cause me any problems. Gluten for someone who's got non-celiac gluten sensitivity or for someone that's got celiac disease, that could absolutely increase systemic inflammation, right? So like this whole absolutist statements where it's a it's a you know, this statement catches all and it's it's universally true, just highlights that's just a very unscientific thing to say. No proper academic or scientist will ever say these are the best foods or these are the worst things or this is the best thing to do right so if you hear something like that you know for a fact it's not evidence-based okay number two um do they get defensive when people ask them for evidence right if they get defensive they're not open to sharing what their sources are and they push back with the whole you know, big pharma funded conspiracy nonsense, right? Straight away, you know, they're not really scientific or they don't really have your best interest at heart because any true person that's, you know, genuine about helping, they would be completely open to sharing what their information is, where it's from, right? If they're alluding to studies show, where are these studies? Why don't you make it public for everyone, right? This is a reason why every single paper I talk about in every single video, I will purposely show the title and author of the paper. So you can just Google it and it will come up straight away, right? Even if it's only for a split second, you can pause the video, get the title, check it for yourself, right? I think people have to be very transparent. If you're not transparent with where your information is from, immediate red flag, okay? Number three is the appeal to authority. Of course, as a general rule of thumb, if you look across, you know, a bell curve distribution, right, the professionals are more likely to put out accurate information compared to the self-proclaimed experts. I'm not saying you just accept what a professional says. I'm not saying you disregard what a non-professional says, right? Because as anyone who watches my content knows, I publicly called out dozens of dietitians, doctors, you know, I think there's even been a pharmacist in there or two, right? I've publicly, yeah, <laughs> I've even, I, you know, I, I make sure I don't just attack or, you know, debunk the self-proclaimed experts because people need to understand that you have to be skeptical no matter who is, is saying what's being said. Even with me, I don't want people to straight away believe what I'm saying, that's why I show the references every single video. Don't believe me, believe the data, right? So you have to just, you know, the appeal to authority is quite an important one, but I'm not saying it's it's a catch-all. It's not a catch-all, right? You have to still be critical, still be skeptical. Just understand that across the board, you're more likely to find accurate information from those who hold valid credentials and are active in the healthcare space compared to those who are not okay 
And I would also say, lastly, just watch out for buzzwords, like watch out for toxic. That's pretty much always wrong because I've never heard a video where they say toxic, where it's actually a toxin. Um, even in the even in the context of alcohol, like you know, a glass of wine is not actually toxic because if you look at the definition the definition of toxin, it has to actively cause harm and illness in that specific amount you're giving, right? A glass of wine does not cause harm and illness in that in 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 that amount. But you know, the the reason I'm saying that is. Because no food is inherently toxic unless you're allergic to that food, right? If you're allergic, then yes, you could argue that, you know, the metabolic processes that happen after you consume it, you would produce some metabolic waste, some metabolic toxins from all of that, you know, adrenaline and, you know, glucocorticoid release and all of the knock-on effects afterwards. Fair enough. That's probably the only situation where you can actually cause a uh, call of food a toxin, right? So watch out, watch out for terms like toxic, inflammatory without any um, context or nuance, right? Um, also watch out for words like clean eating, like what the hell is clean eating? That means nothing, right? That's just a bogus word. Um, also people that heavily advocate for organic, like, come on, like the nutritional value differences are very, very small, you know, organic produce still uses pesticides and ironically, often they're, they're, they're less, uh, tested than, you know, conventional pesticides. So we don't actually know like across the board, you know, whether one's better or the other, you could argue, like, if you want to just be a bit safer then yes, if you want to spend $2 more for a flipping box of, you know, cabbage or lettuce, then by all means go for it. But I'm not going to hurt my bank account doing that. So it's up to you, right? Um, just, just, just watch out for a lot of these. Uh, how do I say biohackery, quackery, holisticy kind of terms? Uh, because often or not, they lack any real nuance, any real specificity, and they don't hold any. You know, there's no, there's no conversation about. Um, the nuance or context of the given situation. It's more just to catch you out with a fear-mongering, sensationalized headline. So those are probably the most important red flags. If you filter out those three, four things, you'll probably cut out 95% of like garbage information, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can also follow Dr. Ids on his social media accounts where he actually, by watching him, you actually do learn how to think more critically, right? And how to, how to you know, recognize these, uh, these myths and this misinformation quickly, right? So you're actually doing a service that way as well. Um, well, Dr. Ids, thank you so much for sharing some of your time with us today. Uh, you've debunked some common myths with us today as well, which is much appreciated. And you've given us some really good tips on red flags to watch out for. And so um, really just appreciate all of the work that you do. We'll have links to your, to your book and all your platforms in the description of this video. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing because we, we need Need more of you um, so uh, at least we have your voice out there but hopefully other scientists and uh, science communicators can step up and, and do work like you're doing because it's really really needed and um, I, we're just uh, it's just been an honor to to spend this time with you today thank you so much for having me I've had a very very lovely chat and I hope this uh, benefits uh, a lot of people thank you mm -hmm.